shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Health and Wealth Podcast with your hosts, Tim and Carter. What's trending in Richards? Carter Wilcox, founder of CSI Financial Group here with my co-host and former wealth advisor, Tim James, founder of chemicalfreebody.com and your new health advisor, This is the show where we reveal the connection between physical and financial abundance. Hey, hello, and Richards, Carter Wilcoxon here, um, joined with my esteemed co-host up there in Portland, Oregon, Mr. Chemical Free Body himself, Tim James. Tim James, how are you today, bud? You know, I'm doing pretty awesome. Doing pretty awesome. Uh, We've got sunshine. It's not 100 degrees anymore. I think it's like 87 or something. It's better. So we're not getting super cooked, but um, just had a really good, I went to the beach. So I, you know, you guys you know, uh, Randa, you live down there in Newport beach, California, right? You got it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So Sunday I took the whole day off. I did a technology fast, which I recommend that everybody do all of you advisors and you don't even have to be an advisor. Just take a freaking technology fast and detach from that and lower your stress, lower your cortisol levels. Um, stop blowing out your adrenal glands, at least for one day a week. I think it's a good thing just to make one day a week your day, your family's day. I think that's a really good, uh, uh, really good thing moving forward for folks. If they if they would, if they do that, I think they'd be happier and they'd look forward to that day. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Well, um, I am I'm very pleased to have a, a guest that we just recently met one another. Uh, her backstory is very awesome. Uh, unique. And I got to tell you, I I believe that one of the things that the financial services industry is missing are more female advisors in general, but especially more female advisors that are like our uh, guest today, Randa Hoffman, uh, MBA, EA, right? Um, enrolled agent, for those of you who do not, you and Richard's out there listening that don't know what EA stands for, enrolled agent. Um, and uh, it is very much our pleasure to have you. And thank you so much for joining us today, Randa. Oh, thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. This is way cool. Mm-hmm. Awesome opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, well, as Tim was mentioning, you are in Newport Beach. So if you don't mind, uh, you know, our enrichers, they really like to get to know our guests, they, as well as, you know, a lot of your clients and, or your, you know, your prospects, those who you're looking to work with, they want to know who you are too, right? Uh, You know, we talked about it the other day, product is not the unmet need in this industry, you know, and people like to do business with those that they know and they like, and they trust. But what the enrichers want to know is how did Randa Hoffman come to be Randa Hoffman in the financial services business. And if you don't mind, I don't know how far that goes back. You know, if that's, you know, when you were a schoolgirl, when you were in college, when you were, you know, whatever, getting your MBA, whatever that may be. Um, what is it that drew you into and your backstory for getting into this industry? Okay. So it's funny that you say that because every time I listen, I listen to a lot of financial advisor podcasts and, you know, that, that comes always the question, how did you start? And everybody says, well, I, I did financial planning when I was in college or I was a finance major. And and I'm like, that's not me at all, actually. I was born in Saudi Arabia, raised in a man, Jordan. So there you go. There's no finance there. I mean, you don't talk about money in the family. Like, that's a big no-no. Right. Um, And I went in IT, you know, once I came here to the States and everything. My mom's American, so we get citizenship through the parent. I went in IT, information technology for 12 years. So not even any finance at all. So I am your typical, what, career changer. So, (laughs) yeah. So here I am, uh, late 30s. And I'm like, you know what? And I remember sitting at my desk in my last IT gig. And I was thinking, if I continue on this path, I will be forgotten. And I don't want to be forgotten. And so it's like, okay, what do I want? What do I want from my life? And I wrote down a few things. And I knew, one of them was I knew I wanted to be in finance. So I was like, well, do I do corporate finance? I'm like, well, that would continue along that path of having almost no impact for me. You know, it's awesome for others, but for me, right? So th- that's why I led to personal finance. And I started my financial planning career at Edward Jones. And since then, I've, you know, transitioned and it really became, what's my legacy? 
how do I want to be a part of this world and how can I be of service in the way that is my vision for doing that? And so that's why I started Radiant Wealth Planning. Wow, that's uh, that's awesome. So so you didn't really have any um, inklings, if you will, you know, growing up thinking to yourself. And and honestly, I'm not sure if many really do think about like, mm-hmm. hey, unless you're sort of born into it, right? Your, your family, you know, maybe your dad was or your mom was in, you know, financial services or whatever. But but typically that's not something I mean, I remember whenever I was in high school, this was the last place I thought I was going to be. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. And sometimes you don't know, you know, how do you know, you know, whoever does know when they were young, kudos to them. That's awesome. But really, how do you know? I had to have so much life lived to figure out what I wanted. And even now here I am at 40, I'm still figuring that out. I'm still like, oh my God, this is what I could do with this. Oh, this is big, you know, and, and still I'm sure I'll do that 50 and 60 and 70. And I hope I do. So, yeah. Yeah. So um, why don't you share with the enrichers, you know, a little bit of your, I always think it's uh, very specialized, very, you know, unique and, and awesome. Someone who has their MBA. So what was that, you know, journey like for you? And, you know, like, what, like, where did that start? And why did you determine, you know, the program that you got into? Uh, so I'll say this, it's a, it's a little of a, well, it's kind of a default. If you're, you know, if you're Arab, then you go to, you get your degree, right? You go to college and, and you get your master's, you know, that's a, that's a little of an error. So my sister got her master's. I'm like, I'm going to get mine. And so, <laughs> so then, I mean, I graduated in 2009, I think it was 2009. It was a while back. But it was a lot of that. But I'll tell you what it did teach me. I did get introduced to personal finance then. And it did perk my ears a little like, huh, what is this? And I remember meeting with the financial advisor that taught the class. And I'm like, okay, so if I have this money to do in savings and 401k and all this, I'm like, here's my now looking back, I created my financial plan. (laughs) And he's like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, so what's the problem? You know, like, why is the hang up? Why is this so hard for people? Where's the rocket science? Like, <laughs> really? That's it? <laughs> like, I thought he was going to tell me like, yeah, and all this. I'm like, oh, you know, but then it was like, okay, I'm still in IT, just living life and moving along. But, you know, the MBA did, it really did expose me to different things. It exposed me to project management. And that's, you know, when I, once I was in IT, that's what I went into project management. And it's so interesting. You think that those skills don't carry over. No experience is unwasted. I use those skill sets so much in what I do, not just the managing of the project, but the biggest thing is communicating. How do you communicate a project to upper level leadership in the same way you communicate a financial planning process or do as we do financial planning for clients or investment management too? So skills do carry over. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so if I heard you right, then what you're saying is you got your MBA while you're in Saudi Arabia or Jordan. No, neither. Oh, I was here. I was here. I was okay. here. Yeah. Yeah. So we moved here about 23 years ago. OK. Yes. 23 years ago. Yeah. And, and originally so- you moved. I remember uh, whenever we were just getting to know each other, you said you used to live in the desert of Phoenix. <laughs> you know, I did. I lived in Illinois for three years first. Um, so when we came to the States, it was Illinois three years. My mom had a sister there. And, you know, it's like, OK, familiar grounds. And then I came to Phoenix. So, yeah, <laughs> for 12 years. And then I'm like, yeah, this is too hot. <laughs> this is, I'm a runner. For some people, it's called jogging. I'm so slow, you know, my motto is <laughs> slow and steady. But I remember running, my buddy and I will start so early and it just really doesn't matter how early you start. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> so hot. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, and and you really like, obviously, um, you know, Newport Beach. Mm-hmm. It's it's a lot like our in season, right? Here. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sure you had no problem with during the season in Phoenix. It's like when the summer's, comes it's a little bit overbearing almost yeah it's it's not normal that's not normal I just call it's not normal (laughs) yeah yeah so I was there for about 12 years and then Washington State for eight years 
And that was that was good. Now, so, when you're in when you, you were in Washington State and you were doing, um, I'm assuming the same thing, uh, like in the financial services, right? Um, so, what was that like in Washington State compared to what it was like whenever? Because you started the financial services journey in Phoenix, is that right? No, in Washington State. Oh, you didn't even start until Washington State. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was in Washington State, I was also still doing IT. And that's when I transitioned, when I was in Washington. So went from IT and then started at Edward Jones when I was in Washington. Yeah. Gotcha. So um, how I, the enrichers want to know, how did you start with Edward Jones? Were you were you getting coffee at a Starbucks one day and somebody goes, eh, or did someone, some Edward Jones person come knock on your door? Hey, I want to be your financial advisor. <laughs> I know, that's what they're known for, right? You go yeah. door knocking in your community to get started, right? <laughs> did somebody knock on your door? No, but uh, that's oh, what okay. we get told. <laughs> <sighs> that's funny. Yeah, that's, it's funny because like a lot of people who started Edward Jones, um, they know somebody that in the firm that says, you know what, you would be a great financial advisor in our firm. So, uh, no, I just went on the website and I'm like, well, let me just apply. So what I did, I had um, kind of an idea of what firm I wanted to be. And I had core values, right? And where, what fits in there and what do I need, right? So I looked at three different firms. I looked at a small, uh, four different firms, a small, really small boutique firm in Seattle, downtown Seattle, and a medium-sized firm in Bellevue, Washington, and then an investment bank, a big, very big investment bank, and not an, I didn't want an investment bank, so Edward Jones. And I kind of did informational interviews for all four, and I was like, what is it? What's the culture? What, what, how do you guys operate? And, you know, Edward Jones, it is if you want to work for a big company, I would say I have so much respect for that firm. And I'm not just saying that just to say that, because I don't just say that just to say things. Sure. I truly, truly do. For a big firm like that, for it being a broker dealer, right? If you know the difference between broker dealer and RIA, it is such a good firm. The core values, there is, you know, Penny Pennington, the CEO, she's like talking about how's experience for the client. How's experience for the client? How's experience for the client? So there's that. Of course, it's quirky in other ways, right? And, you know, things that made me decide to do my own firm, but every place is like that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so over there, but I will tell you, being a financial advisor in Washington state is very different than being a financial advisor in Orange County in, in California, Newport Beach. Mm -hmm. The difference is, is how do people gain their wealth? In Washington, a lot of wealth is created from employees working at a company, getting your 401k, getting your stock options that way. Here in Orange County, there are so many business owners. It is unbelievable. It is freaking awesome. I rarely run into the employees, you know, that have very little. It's, sure. it's very switched. It's really interesting. Very yeah. different dynamics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm I'm sure that it is, and and that's an interesting uh, you know insight into the the two different areas because I know that Bellevue is a very affluent area um, in Washington State, and obviously Orange County, Newport Beach, very affluent, but two different types of affluencies, right? And I, and obviously your the backyard is Microsoft right there where you're at, so that kind of sort of you know makes sense and uh, and things of that nature. So did you run into just out of curiosity? clients that had come from Microsoft or did they be, did any of them become your clients if you did? Yeah. So there's Microsoft, Amazon, Starbucks, Packard. I mean, Expedia, just keep going down the list. There's, I know a bunch of like, I'm not, not thinking of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You do see, you do see a lot of redundancies in that, which is good. So like, for example, Microsoft, which is nice because once you understand the benefit packets for that few first customer that were, client that works at Microsoft, then it's like, I know your benefits and you get your stock options now. And this is when, and this is what we're going to do. And this, and like, yeah, I know it. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> good. Somebody knows, you know, which is nice because if you want to talk to a specialist, okay, mm -hmm. a financial advisor, let's say a financial mm -hmm. advisor, are you going to talk to somebody who knows your 
compensation and your benefit? Or are you going to talk to a generalist that has no idea? No, your comfort zone is going to be with somebody that is already familiar with, with what you have going on, you know, because a lot of times they're not familiar with what they have going on. So. Sure, sure. And I, and I know that uh, we're, we're coming up on maybe a break here. Um, but when uh, I want to make sure that we talk a little bit about what that was sort of like, um, you know, and the dynamic of those types of clients that you are working with and, and how similar that they are, you know, um, that you're working with now mm -hmm. in comparison. Uh, and you alluded to a lot of business owners. Mm -hmm. So, you know, most business owners also do obviously have you know, families and they have things that they want to get taken care of and everything. It, it's, um, but they tend to have employees, obviously, right? So that might be a good inroad. So I know that we're, I want to definitely talk about that and what you're currently doing uh, and how it compares. But uh, Tim James, is there anything that you want to bring into the fold here with you being a former wealth advisor? Um, you know, Randy got her start at Edward Jones, which one of my very dear friends here in Phoenix, Arizona, Got his start at Edward Jones. We're members at the same country club together. And he just recently branched out on his own. Um, so uh, in, anyway, it's uh, I, I think it really is a good foundational piece, but it's the independence that you really want to have would be my guess. Is that fair? Yeah. And you know what? Creating a creating a structure. And I, I'm kind of being very careful on how I word it, right? You know, but creating a structure that really resonates with you, right? So, and, and I'll give you um, an easy, quick example. So, for example, at Edward Jones, if you want to have a client there, they need to have assets to invest because mm -hmm. that's how we're compensated, right? And we take a percentage of assets under management. Mm -hmm. What I was running into is clients that are like, but Randa, all my money is in a 401k that I'm still working at. So I can't move my assets. I'm, I'm working there, contributing. So can you not help me? I'm like, sorry, I can't be your financial advisor. So what I did now, and we'll, we'll touch base a little on this. We'll go a little deeper on this. I kind of split it. There's a financial planning fee and there's an investment management fee. We could do it together or we could do them separate. So mm -hmm. which is nice. So it gives you that freedom and that creativity. Oh my God, there's so many... And I call them genius ideas. I text my friend. I'm like, Lauren, I have a genius idea. <laughs> it just allows you. I can say what I want and be me. I can be me. I can be me. That's the biggest thing. That's, <clears throat> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, let's get more into like what you're doing with your clients. Um, I don't know if you guys have talked about CSI Financial yet. Probably and then maybe how that looks for a new advisor um, just meeting uh, CSI Financial. We'll be right back. Are you concerned about being able to get all of your affairs in order during this trying time? Are you troubled by what would happen if you ever became incapacitated? Maybe you've been procrastinating in the past to address these issues, but now, more than ever before, you know just how important it is to get everything documented. Well, don't worry, because we can get you taken care of right from the comfort of your own home. Welcome to the revolutionary My Life Card Plan Estate Plan Processing Platform, home of the last estate plan you'll ever need. We are very pleased you are here, and rest assured, we can offer you a complete estate planning experience regardless of where in the 50 states you may live. Our unique transformational system combines efficiency, convenience, and professional support at levels you never thought possible for setting up your estate plan. Moreover, we will provide you with powerful, user-friendly dynamics that put you in total control of your plan throughout your lifetime. Call us today at 888-316-6040 or go to www.csifinancialgroup.com and our team of specialists will be there to assist you every step of the way. What's up, Enrichers? Tim James here with my co-host Carter Wilcox. And today in the house, we've got Randa Hoffman. And um, I had a question for you, Randa. Uh, when you trained at Edward Jones in the beginning, did they give you a free laptop and pay for your license, to, your, your for your test? 
Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they that's did. how they that's how they get people. Yeah, they get them yeah. in with the, the free the freebies up front. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. they take half of everything on in the end, and then you find out that you don't really own those clients. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah. how did you break? That was my question. Is like, how did you figure out a way to to break out of Edward Jones and re- retain any clients at all, or did you just decide to start fresh? Uh, <laughs> Okay, so so I'll give you my answer and then I'll give you like, uh, I don't know if that was the best way. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> break away. You know what? It takes a lot of courage. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of courage. You know, Bravo, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, and I, I put this today on my social post. You want to know what goes on in the depth of your subconscious mind, your deepest beliefs that you have no idea you've never even heard become an entrepreneur. <laughs> you will learn. You will learn your belief system and your mindset. Do that. And so it. I started. So what triggered? I always knew I was going to do my own firm. I, I don't know why. I just I kind of knew. I knew I was going to have my own business. I'm very entrepreneurial. January of 2020. So just January of last year, I went to another lady's firm. It's an, and she owns the firm. She used to work at Edward Jones, and she left. And so and she's like, just come come chat and just, she was trying to recruit me, but I was like, but that's not the point. The point is when I went into the firm, I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. This is so cool. It was so nice and fresh and modern. And she had wine and this, I'm like, oh my God, it's not about the wine again, but it's just (laughs) that she was able to, and I keep going to back to this, but she was able to express who she was. And I just love that. I'm like, I don't know what you have going on here, but I love this. I want this. I don't know what this is, but this I want. And so I went back and for about seven months, I worked on a business plan. I had to be, I had to had all my ducks in a row as much as you can without knowing, right? Mm -hmm. How it's going to play out. But I had to work on my business plan and really have it figured out and take the leap. And you did. Are you happy you did? Are you happy? Oh my God, without a doubt. This yeah. is so this is so cool. This is so cool. So with Edward Jones, there's the one year non-solicit. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm very um respectful of that. And of course, I did didn't. Clients can go wherever they want, right? It is their money, they can do whatever they want. What I did tell them is just stay put for a minute, see who you're gonna get. You might like that next person that takes over. You might like them. And then my reasoning was less movement for the client. My model is different. So are they going to be okay with the model? You know what? I should have taken the clients. (laughs) When they came and said, Randa, we want to be with you. I should have been like, yeah, come on over. Because Mm -hmm. yes, I started fresh, fresh right from the beginning again. So that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Takes wow. a lot of hustle, but you know. <laughs> yeah, that 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 is amazing. So, in hindsight, you would have done maybe a few things differently, is what you're saying. Oh, hands down. Yeah, hands down. I mean, I'll tell you a business use case. This is a business use case. You know, that will teach you at college, university, of what not to do. This is what you don't do when you start a business. And I think Carter, I think I told you this. You don't start a business based on relationships. Move to a state a week later where you don't have any relationships <laughs> in a pandemic where you can't build relationships. Don't, don't do that. Really don't do that. Not, not good. So, but, yeah. but it's okay. It worked out. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I know that, um, you know, we did talk a little bit about, you know, the uniqueness of what uh, CSI financial group and by extension, you know, our new company. And, and I'm very excited about launching Epic services company. And, and Tim, I haven't even really talked to you much about, our new venture. Uh, the website should be live by the end of the week. I was just talking with the website developer today. We've been working on it for uh, over two months now. And we are we created this really out of necessity so that we could be the estate planning solution for advisors and their clients throughout the country. And in the in the the beauty and the genius of our entire platform and infrastructure is that it's all electronic. It's all digitized estate planning, but it's hands-on um, uh, hand-holding with the advisors and working with them collaboratively with their clients. 
And it really is meant to be that front end client acquisition piece that as everyone, uh, all you enrichers that are out there, if you have a business, it all begins and ends with client acquisition. Is that, is that fair to say? Brandon? Yeah. With no clients, there's no business. <laughs> yeah. My, my, my advisor that trained me, he said, he goes, Tim, it doesn't matter how long your alphabet soup is behind your name. Basically all the, you know, you can be RIA, you know, CFP, blah, 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 A, B, C, D, E, F, G. He said, you can have really nice clothes and you can be all dressed up and you got nowhere to go. That's the problem, right? So you can't be a secret agent. So it's all about marketing. And I can tell you that every year in um, October, November, we would meet and we would plan out the marketing for the in next entire year, the calendar of events, where, which, which restaurants we were going to do our dinners, the mailers that were going to go out, everything was all planned out a year in advance. And all the successful businesses I've seen, if you're looking at success from a monetary standpoint, um, I don't want to close and lock off all the doors for other ways to get success because it's just one of them. But um, was they had they planned they planned their years out. Every single company that I've seen that's really successful monetarily plans out their year in advance. So that'd be a really good question to ask yourself as an advisor or a business owner. Or how about a dad or a mom or a couple planning out your life? Right. It's just like you could plan some stuff out ahead of time. And that really makes a big difference. Yeah, that's no. a good one. That's yeah. good. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that. That was good. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, you know what? We we are all about you know education and enlightenment on the on the Health and Wealth podcast. Uh, little little plug there for the Health and Wealth podcast show. <laughs> so, um, enrichers, let's find out from Randa um, how in the last segment we talked about the business owner primarily that you're working with there in, in Newport beach compared to a lot of the Mr. And Mrs. Jones, if you will, uh, for lack of better terminology that you're working with there in the Seattle area. And, you know, what's that dynamic like? And, and I want to kind of go back to the, the Mr. And Mrs. Jones aspect of that as a female advisor, how did that, uh, how did that work? And, and the reason why I am a huge fan and, and a proponent of, encouraging more female advisors in this space is because if you are, if you are dealing with the household, Mr. And Mrs. Jones, actually speaking, the matriarch is going to outlive the patriarch and they, I think are setting themselves up for a huge client retention <clears throat> story of female financial advisors, because there's a lot of an emotional uh, aspect of it. And I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I believe that there is a lot of emotional attachment in being able to um, connect those. But I'm just wondering, how was it as a female advisor just starting out in Washington and then and then kind of what it's like dealing with business owners now in Newport Beach? So I, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. Listen, if you're a female and you want to get in the industry, please do. It's not as scary as it was 10 years ago, and it's definitely not as scary as it was 20 years ago, right? You know, back then was very, it was very typical that that vision that we have of the only female in the office. It's not like that. Okay, maybe some firms, it's they're outdated and it's like that. But a lot of places, it's not like that anymore. So do your homework on what the culture is, of course, and see that and see where what feels right for you. But try it out. Even in Carter, you and I were talking about this last week, but. Even if you don't want to be client facing, you love the numbers part, you know, you love building portfolios or doing investment management or, or uh, sorry, yeah, the investment management. It's okay. You can do that too. You don't always have to be the, you know, the emotional talk to a client on an emotional level because not, not all of us are like that. Or some people like to do both, right? They want to do both. So let's see, what, what was the question? Yeah, I well, got yeah no, and, and that's great. That's great uh, information there too. And I'm glad that you and gave that encouragement to the enrichers that are listening out there. Um, so the question really is, is what was the dynamic like oh. in, in working with the Mr. and Mrs. Jones households compared to working with business owners from a female advisor's perspective? Yeah, you know, for the household, it's the problem with the problem with the households when the guy passes away, okay, let's say that. That's so we're going to actually speaking. I, I'm not I'm not making this up. Okay, but statistics: the guy passes away, the husband passes away, 
and the wife doesn't know the advisor, then the wife ends up taking her money to somebody where she feels comfortable with. This could happen if it's a male advisor or female advisor, if the wife is not involved. Okay. That's why it's so important to make sure to get the wife involved. Not only is it good for your business. Oh my God, we want to uplift other women, you know, because what happens is the husband passes away. She hasn't been involved. You know, my husband takes care of the finances and then it's like deer in headlights. It's like, oh my God, where's all the account? Who do I need to talk to? What do I do? No, we don't want that. We don't want that at all. No, no good. So, you know, it's so important to get the wife involved. And I'm not saying make sure she knows exactly what the investments are. Clients don't care about that. You know, I don't care. That's why I'm delegating it to you, financial advisor, because I don't want to do that. Right. But it's so important. So a lot of it is joint, 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 joint stuff. Because it's like their joint retirement. Well, I want to retire on this day. Well, I want to retire on this day, right? Everybody has that. So we come together. The clients in uh, California here in Newport Beach, it's not only talking about, okay, when does she want to retire and stuff like that, but we're also talking about her business. Okay, so what's the bottom line? What's that revenue? What's your product, you know, your profit and loss statement? What's all that? Because Here's the thing with a lot of business owners, they have no problem investing in their business. They have such a hard time investing in themselves. And so what happens if we're investing in the business, but you are the business and when you sell it, you don't get that, you know, that multiplier that you thought you were going to get. And there goes your retirement plan. There goes your retirement money. So that's what we don't want to do, or at least make sure the business is set up in a way that, okay, we have some money here and yes, you're going to get some money out of it, but also let's take care of you. So, so, so then, so then let me ask you another um, question that I'm I'm curious about. How does the, um, because you just got through saying with the household you're working with in, in Washington state, you are trying to encourage the business owner's spouse in some instances or in a lot of instances hmm. to be part of that? Or do you feel like that's not as relevant in that situation or, uh, or is it a hodgepodge? So I, I did switch my business model. So when I was in Washington at Edward Jones, you know, I was like, okay, you want to be a client? Let's go. Okay. I'll take anybody, anybody, mm-hmm. whether you're a fit with me and who I am or you're not, I don't care. I have metrics. I need a hit. So let's keep going. <laughs> When I started my firm, I'm like, you know what? I did that and that did not work for me. So many times I was in a situation, I'm like, oh my God, that is not okay, right? So when I started Radiant Wealth Planning, I'm like, you know what? I want to focus on females. So the firm is, I say it loosely, exclusively for women. And I'm saying this because I don't want guys to get hurt. Oh, what about me? <laughs> we'll take we'll take care of you or I have buddies that will... We'll love to work with you, but exclusively for women. And the reason I say that, because we have such a hard time finding people we trust. I, oh, I hear so often, I know I should work with somebody, but I don't want to talk to a guy who's going to just like, you know, talk to me like I've done all these mistakes or talk to me like an, I'm an idiot. I talked to a prospective client. She's like, Randa, I have two law degrees. And I used to be in investment management, investment banking back in the day. So I have my Series 7 and 66. And the guy still said, well, this might be too complicated for you to understand. What? That just blows my mind. No wonder we don't want to talk to financial advisors. Yeah. My God. That's why we need more female financial advisors in the business. There there are some. Actually, I do know some uh, male financial advisors that are phenomenal. One of my mentors in Washington, he's just such a sweetheart. I adore him and he's just so kind. And so he's not like that. Yeah, no. And and, and here and here's the thing. This is not to, you know, eliminate or instead of or, you know, it's it's um, it's just it's an area that, you know, you mentioned earlier, Randa, that, you know, used to be a little bit scary. So people didn't even think about getting, you know, females didn't think about even getting into this space. And I appreciate you saying Hey, 20 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, it's nothing like that at all. And now, 
But of course, you know, you're you're going to always have someone that you're not a good fit with. And it could be a female, by the way. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's OK, too. You know, and it really goes back to understanding what your core values are and understanding what kind of business is it? You know, what, what's your vision for the business? You know, I have a certain vision on who I want to work with and who I resonate and who I want to uplift. And, you know, it's females that I see. We just we just need that, you know, and for guys, it's easy for a guy to find other guy financial advisors like, yeah, I, I connect with you. We resonate. We have a lot in common. You know, we can go golf or do that. Like females, who, who is that? And there there aren't a lot of females out there either. A lot of female financial advisors. So yeah. we just we just need more. We just yeah, need yeah. more. Yeah. The pool's definitely not as uh, as as deep there on the which is why we're saying female advisors, don't be afraid to get into this industry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of firms. There's big firms, there's small firms, there's all different different type of firms. You know, there's even firms that only women work in because, you know, not not because they didn't they excluded men, but just that's who got gravitated to, like other women. Like, yeah, I want to be a part of this. And yeah. so it just became women-led firms. So it's just, look, well, look, yeah. Well, the, the numbers are staggering, and you know this stat, but enrichers, listen up. Here's the deal. The greatest wealth transfer in the history of mankind at a clip of $68 trillion, that's trillion with a T, is getting ready to pass to the next generation. Um, so the opportunity is really amazing, which is why um, our core foundational approach is educating on what estate planning is and why really it's family succession planning because of that wealth transfer. And that's critically important. Um, and the advisors that we work with, that is their number one thing that they start with, which leads to everything else that they want to do. But that's why the opportunity is so immense because of the sixty-eight trillion. I mean, again, sixty-eight trillion dollars. That's a, and that's not a made-up number. That's not something. Those are statistics that are out there uh, that you can find. But that's why it's a not only is it a huge opportunity, but you can be able to do so much good by helping the clients understand the most optimal way to have that be transferred. Uh, and, and again, that's why we're talking a lot of estate planning and, and those estate plans that we help to facilitate and going back to Epic Services Company. That's why we are starting that company because so many advisors, right, wrong, or indifferent, are relegated to having to create some quasi, you know, estate planning attorney relationship. And that's that's a one-way street, again, right, wrong, or indifferent uh, as, as a general rule. Um, and you lose control and all that. I will tell you right now, that we've been doing this for four years, leading with and, and having a state plan be that the, the foundational approach. Clients don't want to work with attorneys. <laughs> Your clients don't want to work with attorneys. Sorry, that's just the reality of it. And the statistic from a, an article that we share on a regular basis from wealthcouncil.com is that 83% of Americans, 83% Randa, don't have this necessary tool that we call a revocable living trust. And it's because I believe there hasn't been an easy access point to getting these types of things done, but almost without fail. And we know this over the last four years of doing this, the clients are either the, the prospective clients, especially um, that advisors are looking to work with, but the advisors themselves when they discover and when we enlighten them on your clients, your prospective clients that don't have $50 million, maybe they got two or a million and a half or 800,000, they are relegated to just getting what they get. But they would much rather, if they were going to take that procrastination that they've been doing on getting this type of stuff work done, because it's not like we have to convince them. I already know this. You don't have to convince them that this work needs to get done. Right. They already know it needs to get done. But they're like, yeah, conventional wisdom, though. I got to go see an attorney. Can I just work with Randa? Can she just have a solution for me to get this type of work done? So I don't really have to work with an attorney because who likes court? Who likes attorneys as a general rule? Right. There's exceptions to all those rules. But 
That's why it's really been our foundational approach. And that's why Epic Services Company is being created because we will be that solution for advisors to go to, to solve that, that traditional problem for your clients or your prospects to get that type of work done in a very cost-effective, efficient, digitized way, all from the comfort and safety of either your office, your generally office, um, or even from home. So anyway, uh, that I just wanted to make sure that I, I uh, discussed that a little bit because it really is important for the, the enrichers to know that type of stuff on that transfer that's going to be happening. $68 trillion, huge opportunity. You. And you know what? Honestly, it's a disservice to our clients if we're not taking care of that and that taking care of them in that way. You know, if we're never talking about the estate planning part, yes, we can't we can't draft legal documents. I get it. But if we're not talking about that estate planning part of it and really the transition of wealth and how are we going to do it in the most tax efficient way? Wow, we just robbed them. This is hard earned money that they had hard earned. Like that is, we did not do a good job if we don't do that. And you're right, honestly, there were so many times, you know, at the beginning of my career, I was like, okay, now you have to talk to the state attorney and get those done. Here's your to-do list. My God, that never happened. It never, rarely does it happen. So then I got smart. I'm like, okay. And the first appointment with the state attorney, we're going to go together, you know, because it's like, let's, you know, up for them, it's like, somebody familiar there is with me, right? Mm -hmm. So we would go together, but then they would go MIA, right? I'm like, come on, we really need to get this done. So it's just, it's just really good. It's just really good. It's really good. Ideally, mm -hmm. it's good to have that relationship. Like you're saying, like, it's so hard to get that relationship with the estate attorney. You're like, no, I want to create a relationship. They're like, no, no, I'm, I'm good. I just want to do my work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want to relate. So if you could do that and just sit in the office and do it with them, it's like, it, it's seamless for the client. Happy, oh, seamless, yeah. easy, easy. Well, you're, I think you're going to really enjoy this, Randa. Um, so what you just said, though, actually speaks a lot. I mean, it speaks volumes about your um about your moral compass and your integrity. Like, mm -hmm. like saying, if you don't get your estate plan done as an advisor, you're really, I mean, you're just not doing it. You're doing a, it's a disservice. It's, it's like slapping your clients in the face. Now, if they slap you in the face and say, I'm not going to get a, a, a revocable living trust, then, okay, <laughs> then you've, they're probably just maybe you don't want them as a client. I don't know. Like that's on you. Right. Yeah. You just be like that's on you. Right. You're because it's like you work so hard. Like I tell people, like yeah. entrepreneurs, business people, even people W two wage earners. You know, half the battle is making the money. The other half is keeping it right. And a lot of that's taxes, and then upon death, depending on which administration's coming in and out, and taxes and legislate. You know, political wind that blows um, is going to dictate, you, you got to have that stuff buttoned up. Otherwise you work hard for everything. Like you said, sweat, blood and tears, and then just give 20, 30, 40, 50, 60% of it away or all of it can just disappear because of, you know, improper planning that could have been handled for pennies, literally pennies. So anyway, it's time to take a break. We're, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, Randy gets to ask me any question about health that her heart desires. We'll be right back. You want the absolute best for yourself, and you want it to be easy. That's why we created Green 85. It helps with detoxifying the body gently. We're proud it's chemical-free, unlike almost all other supplements you'll find. Bottom line, Green 85 will get you healthier. We look forward to hearing what Green 85 did for you. To get this product and our other amazing products, go to chemicalfreebody.com. That's chemicalfreebody.com. Important. Um, and the advisors that we work with, that is their number one thing that they start with, which leads to everything else that they What's want up, to do. What's up, Richards? Tim James here. Back with Carter because Wilcoxon. Really, and our I mean, again, today, Randa so, and that's not a made up number. Randa, okay. Well, we've fine, talked about financial advising. We've talked but, about uh, building a business, what to do, what not to do. You're going to write a book on that, right? Someday. Yeah. Awesome. You so why don't we go ahead? Yeah. Now, now's the fun time, at least for me, um, <laughs> where you get to ask me questions about health. So go for it. What do you have any questions about your health, your family's health, public health? What do you got? Okay. I, I do have a question for you. 
So your t-shirt said, let's get, let's get high together. Okay. So, oh, there's more. Oh, on yoga. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> Cause I was like, what's, what's going on? So are you it, it gets people, it's a conversation starter. It was a gift. Somebody gave it to me. It's good. It's yeah. good. Do you do yoga? Mm-hmm. Do you do yeah. hot yoga? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's, I, it's amazing. Really? I tried it a few times. Oh, my God. It was a no-go. I think, I don't know what goes on. No electrolytes or something, but I was like, you know, lightheaded. Well, the thing of it is with it is, like, if you get lightheaded, you should just lay down. Because a lot of it's just acclimating to the heat is what it is. And yeah, you see, just got to slowly work your way into it. See, you're telling a type A personality to lay down when everybody's doing it, yoga. I'm like, no, I have to keep going. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's your ego. So we'll oh, have to work totally. on that. Oh, my God. That is. So I know bad. because I have I, I'm still working on that, but I've, been, <laughs> I've had a lot of practice. So, yeah, um, hot yoga will smash your ego very quickly <laughs> and it'll put it'll put you down. <laughs> and make you sit down because everybody's on their own journey. I think that's the most important thing that we teach. I'm a yo I'm a yin yoga instructor. Um, the most important thing we teach in yoga is that, um, well, besides breath work, is that you know do not compare yourself to anybody else. You know, everybody is literally on their own journey. They come in in different places and different times in their life and different ages, and we've all had different stressors or different injuries and things we're dealing with and. Um, you know, my neck's hurt right now. So it's like, I can't do a lot of things that I want to do. And it's frustrating. And one of the reasons you guys asked me about yoga, and this is a, um, a good point is like when COVID happened, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a five to seven day a week yoga dude, 90 minutes hot room or vinyasa yoga or yin yoga. I'm, I'm doing it all the time. And, and it, I was pretty much bulletproof. Now when, when COVID hit, I'm like, oh, that'll be back open pretty soon, you know, and then we all know what it's like. It's the never ending saga of like, it's never going to open again. It's it's complete, complete, close, complete lockdowns for everything. But the reality is, is I haven't been getting in. I didn't get in at all for a long time. And then finally, I'm like, geez, I'm like, I'm, I don't think I because I am not one to wear. I will not wear a mask. There's no way I'm not going to wear one of those masks. And I won't do it because it's not because um well, I love my health, right? And, you know, masks disrupt your oral microbiome and they cause teeth rotting and gum disease and they cause teeth cracking. And and uh, for children, they disrupt, uh, it's a future predictor of the child's immune health. So I wouldn't want to put one on. Plus they make you sicker no matter what. And, um, but people think that they work. So whether you, whether you think they do or not, um, my opinion is they don't. And um, so I'm not going to do that. So I had to start doing yoga on my own. And I did it for a little bit and I got out of it. Now I'm just like, because this neck injury, I'm like, that's it. I'm going back to seven days a week. Mm. You know, so I've already started stretching. I'm doing 10 minutes a day, doing what I can, even with the neck industry. And I'm going back because when I was doing freaking yoga, I didn't get injured. And if I did, it was like, I'd healed up very quickly. So I know that as we get older, after 35, if you're younger than 35, you should be stretching three days a week. Once you're over 35, you need to stretch seven days a week. Cats and dogs do it every time they get up, they stretch, animals are doing it, we're not doing it, and that's why, you know, it makes us more prone to injury, and then we get older, you know, we kind of get like this, and, you know, shrink up a little bit. You know, that, that that's, I know, I, yes, that's stretching, <laughs> stretching, <laughs> that's what, that, that actually, it's funny, because I was, when, on break, I was, Karen and I is like, so you're a runner, I'm like, well, yeah, I'm really slow runner, you know, it depends on the other person's pace. I might be a jogger for them. I might be a walker anyway, but I'm a runner. My, my model slow and steady, but I was telling him like twice I try to train for a full marathon and twice I never was able to complete whether the marathon itself or the training injury, but injury because of not stretching. That is every time what it comes down to not stretching, not stretching yeah. enough or not stretching my IT band. So now I'm, you know, here I am, I'm at 40 and I'm starting to figure out, no, I think I need to over Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> stretching every day. It's, it's every day, every day, every day. Otherwise, you know, it's just, you're not going to be as flexible. You won't live as long. You won't be as youthful. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's, there's so many reasons to do it, not just for your body, but for your organ systems as well. And, 
and uh, and everything. I, I think I've told this story before. I'll I'll do a real quick recap. But those the the Shaolin monks they train and they do a version of karate, right? And but they also train and do a version of yoga. Mm. And I re- I'll never forget like this master came out and they were interviewing him and he said the that he said the 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 masters that trained only in the karate lose their power in their 60s and 70s. But the masters that did both the karate training and the yoga training where they were stretching and lengthening their ligaments and their tendons and their fascia, which is the largest organ in the body, uh, staying limber and loose, never lose their power. And this is why these guys could be 100 years old. They were like 110 pounds and they could pretty much take out any NFL football player uh, with their pinky finger, right? Impressive. Because of both of the trainings. And they, so I'm like, whoa, I'm like, that that makes a lot of sense. And you know, it's kind of like taffy. Taffy's really, I, we explain this in yin yoga because people are like, why are we doing yin? Well, because you're, picture your fascia like taffy. It's very stiff, okay? And then if you just take taffy and pull it really fast, it's going to snap and break, okay? That's your ligaments, tendons, and fascia. Now, if you take that fa- taffy or your fascia and you just put a gentle pressure on it, gentle, 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 that taffy will slowly start to open up. And that's what happens with your fascia and your ligaments and tendons. You constant pressure so in yin yoga you do a minimum of uh three minutes to ten minutes stretching posture in one position and a type people are like oh I, I need to get moving i need to do something else but it's if you get into yin yoga it's very humbling because you're like you'll get into a pose like you know um could be any pose it depends on where you're at physically but let's say you're really you haven't moved much and you you're overweight a little bit and you're really stiff just doing child's pose, which is when you're on your hands and knees and stuff. And that could be difficult for some people. Right. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, you're there and then your body starts opening up. So after 90 seconds of stretching, the fascia starts to move. Mm -hmm. So if you're stretching for 90 seconds anywhere or one minute, think about it. How many people stretch for like 30 seconds to a minute and like, okay, I'm good on that, that muscle or whatever that tendon. No, you haven't even touched the fascia. It's 90 seconds just to get it warmed up for the work to begin. So you'll be sitting there slightly on the edge. You don't want any pain, but just slightly on the edge of discomfort. And you just kind of stay on that edge. And you'll do it for three to 10 minutes. And I've had so many people do yin yoga the first time. And then afterwards, the next day or two, they're calling me like, oh, my God, dude, my hips are so much open. Like I did snowboarding. Like I can't, I, I'm getting into that. Once people do yin yoga, they they realize that, that's I like yin yoga because it's a nice, gentle way for people to come into the practice. You know, you're first out of the gate going into Bikram hot yoga for 90 minutes. You might not come back. <laughs> it's like that's what I did. I didn't go back. <laughs> no, yeah. I, did, I did yin yoga for about a year when I actually when I was in Arizona. Hmm. Oh, my God. The difference, even the difference in just a, I did it once a week. It was amazing. And I'm a tight, I, you know, I lift and I run, so I'm naturally tight. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was so good. But then, you know, I I get bored. I'm like, Oh, it's so boring. Well, just wait till you get, you know, we're stubborn (laughs) like that. And then when you get an injury, I've had two injuries back to back. And then I'm like, that's it. I'm done. Like, I know this, like I teach it and I drifted away from it. Like, so everybody's, nobody's perfect. So, you know, the thing to do is just say, let's just do it 10 minutes a day, make a goal, I'm just going to do it 10 minutes a day, no matter what. And for you, run, if you're running or other runners listening, um, besides you in yoga, there's um, you want to get a good body work specialist, somebody that's like a rolfer or really good at body work. Now, rolfing, R-O-L-F-I-N-G, is a, a technique developed by a gal named Ida Rolf. It's just really deep. Um, they just get in deep into the fascia, and they, they, they open stuff up uh, and help you with injuries and stuff like that or preventing injuries. You can just get tune-ups, but your own stretching routine is going to be the most valuable thing that you have because it's, it's the day in and day out. It's the, you know, that you, the things that you need to do to keep your body healthy, because sometimes you can't get in to see these people. Sometimes people can't afford them because they're, you know, it could be too much money. Just, it just it, I, I think it's an investment in health, but you know, what's it cost to do stretching? I just, it's the, the investment is loving yourself enough to do it and take care of yourself because we're all aging. We're all getting older or we're not. It's literally a choice. It literally is, you know, and I, I've, I've looked at this and I'm thinking, wow, it's like we have about a billion cells that die every day. Now, if you're, if your body's manufacturing more than that's dying, you're getting younger. But if it's, you know, manufacturing less cells, 
than that are dying, then you're going to, you're going to get older. And I've actually went through this over the last 11 years and I've experienced both, both of these phases in the last 11 years myself personally with my lifestyle habits. And it's really, really eye opening, but also exciting at the same time, because you can realize you can literally um, start regenerating, um, you, you know, youth into your body because cells are designed to regenerate. Mm -hmm. How do you help people with mindset? You know, this has been the new kick for me. You know, I think I mentioned it several times in the podcast, but it's mindset, mindset, limiting beliefs. Oh, my God. When it comes with exercise, I have to do it all or I don't have to or nothing, you know, but really, that's not realistic. Or, oh, I did it for a week and it doesn't work. That's all mindset. How do you tackle that? Well, I think that we just have to look at things like a day in your life. OK, mm. so what would be your ideal day? This is an exercise I have people do in our coaching, our coaching students. What what would be your ideal day? Where would you where would you wake up? Would you wake up on the beach? Um, what kind of um, uh, blanket would you have? I mean, literally down to the detail. What would you drink? You know, um, who would you wake up next to? How would you treat each other when you woke up and first spoke to each other? What would you do next? Right. So, you know, I think about that. It's like I'm on my beach house. Um, I wake up this beautiful woman next to me. She smiles. We acknowledge each other. We spend time together. I drink purified restructured water, put a little salt under my tongue. I mean, I have my little system, right? <laughs> and I go, and then I, ha I actually don't have to make my own green juice anymore because I have a gal named Consuela that does it for me. Right. So I've actually done that. So um, that's, that's like my, I've written that down on my. Um, I hope you have a good account. financial advisor. No. Yeah, on my goal sheet, <laughs> right? So, but maybe you want to wake up in the mountains and maybe you want to wake up by yourself or maybe you want to have some, you know, you know, a chiseled stallion next to you, right? So it just, it just depends on, and he, but he, and he tells you that he loves you and he means it, right? So, I mean, you have a really good relationship because you have good communication. So all of that stuff boils down with like, I like to put it on paper. This exercise literally takes less than four hours. And then you can actually put your ideal life next to what your life looks like. And then start growing, start mm -hmm. growing, start adding new habits into your life and start small and then let it build. Don't, it's kind of like compounding interest. You guys know this, right? <laughs> it looks like a grass growing and it doesn't do anything. And then towards the end, it's like, woo, and it takes off, right? And you have all this money that comes in because that's, that's how it works with your, anything in life, especially your health, relationships, finances, all that stuff. So it's the daily habits. If you miss one day, no big deal, but get back on the two days in a row, you got problems, right? You just want to get back into it making sure that you're drinking water. If you didn't exercise, then you know what? You're like, you're right before you go to bed, you know, do three push-ups, three jumping jacks, do a bend over stretch, and then, you know, take, take a quick shower and then hit the rack. You know, do something, do something. Maybe it's just do, do some breathing exercises. Hmm. So for us, the, the, the mindset thing is really, you know, getting clear on what you want first, writing it down, um, we bring in the accountability in with the coaching, but if you don't have coaching, find an accountability partner. That isn't your spouse or your mm -hmm. relation, you know, the person you're in a relationship with because you don't want to resent them for keeping you accountable. <laughs> yeah. Or that all, the, I, I guess that would really depend on your communication level. That, that, in, in I, I, it's so funny, Tim. Now, Tim, you know, Christina, you know, obviously mm -hmm. the two of us and, and we did our, I think podcast number three might've been, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how we had the ladies on and everything and our, our better halves, if you will. But it's interesting. Um, my wife on a daily basis, it happened today, by the way, she is very much into, you know, fitness. And, you know, she was exercise science major at Baylor when she went to Baylor University. And um, so I actually I have to convince her to be to hold me more accountable <laughs> because she's a she does. She's like, well, you know, what? but then, you know, hey. You don't need that late night snack. Go put that late night snack back up there. But that's because I've, you know, the communication that we have, they, they, it really is, it depends. Mm. Now, now, it's interesting because I moved out to Phoenix, Arizona to become a golf pro. And one of the things that I had to learn early on is how do I communicate as someone who's teaching your significant other, my spouse, how to play golf, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's another thing. And there was definitely lots of friction between the two of us with golf. Some people are better students than others. Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm a really, really good student. 
compared to her. Um, but we, you know, you learn how to communicate and learn how to do that. But it's actually for me, it's great because we have, a, you know, we have our own gym in our house and everything. And I go out there in the morning and I work out and everything. So she's a great accountability partner for me. But it, it, it is a rarity. I don't think I'm, I think I'm the exception or we're the exception, not the rule. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It depends if you're, if you're a good student, I'm a bad student. Don't tell me what to do. That's my wife in a nutshell. We, we had to definitely learn over about seven or to 10 years on the whole golf thing. And uh, <laughs> it, it used to be fireworks on the golf course sometimes with the two of us, but now we just, we, we absolutely love it. It's a great time together. Um, you know, she's, she's a good golfer and uh, she's also a, a very good coach and, and teacher for me on uh on working out and everything so anyway um there was something else i was uh gonna say in that segment but for life of me i can't remember what it is well maybe it'll come back to you okay brandon do you have any other questions for me really quick water people I didn't, I didn't tee her up on this one by the way i did not tee her up on the water <laughs> People think all types of waters are the same, but it's actually not. What do you know about that? Like, what, what can you share? Well, the first thing is to understand that we live in a polluted world today and all the water is polluted. Hmm. So, you know, there's even, you know, people that are drinking spring water. Sometimes they're having gallstones and kidney stones because they don't realize that there's too many minerals in the water and it's causing that. Right. So it's not just about pollutants. We have to look at everything. So for me, you know, when you, and I always tell that story where, you know, the little, those, those six water researchers went around the world. They went and some of the lakes, 1500 miles into the interior, they found that both two and two and a half inch fish have these have both male and female organs today because of the estrogen mimickers from plastics are so pervasive in our, in our environment. So number one, our water needs to be clean. Uh, so we need to purify it, not a filter purification mm -hmm. system. It's a different story. So we have reverse osmosis, uh, distillation, deionization. Those are three of the ones that I know of. Um, and then anytime you run it through those, you're going to filter out or excuse me, purify out about 90% of the contaminants, but you still have 10% left. That's why we believe in triple purification, because then you pull out 90% of the 10, you're left with 1%, you pull out 90% of that, and you got 99.9% .9 purified water. Now, if you're in city tap water, the water needs to be restructured because the high pressure pipes coagulate the water molecules. They're too big. You'll just drink a lot of water and pee a lot of water out. Um, you'll probably get a little bit more absorption because you're drinking more water but if, than you were if you weren't drinking water. But the bottom line is, is that we really need to restructure our water. So I experienced this firsthand. I drank a quart of water that was restructured. It disappeared. Like it just freaking disappeared. And 15 minutes later, she's like, you're going to have you drink another quart. I'm like, I don't think I can do it. And I drank it. It was like the first one wasn't even there. I was like, what is going on here? And then 15 minutes later, she's like, I'm going to have you do another one. 24 minutes into that process, my brain turned on and my arms started tingling. And I was high on water. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to get high on life, um, but naturally. And um, for six hours, I was high for six hours on this water. And I called her up and I bought the unit. And that's when I started pairing the, the purification with the restructuring. Now, that unit also alkalizes, does some other things. It charges the water with molecular hydrogen, which is really powerful. And that's what I do. So my water is purified, and then I run it through that system that does the, um, the restructures, alkalizes, and charges it with molecular hydrogen. Because that unit by itself is a very – it's not a really good purifier, but it's it does all these other things. So – that's after I bought like six water machines to get to this point because I'm always expanding and learning and growing and I'm open minded to this kind of stuff because I want to I I want to be as healthy as I can. You know, I was in surgery and I had an organ removed and I was overweight and I had all these skin issues and I don't ever want to go back. So I'm always trying to find new ways. And sometimes the new ways doesn't have to be some fancy machine. It could be something very simple, very simple, like chewing your food until liquefied. Powerful. Avoiding liquids with meals, gastrointestinal game changer, you know, doing some breath work before you eat to, to, to pull the blood out of your extremities back into your organ system so you can digest. These are game changing tactics that we share with people, but you have they're easy to do and they're also easy not to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we we actually, you know, you, you wondered how to change mindset. Well, we use the phone, too. We just have people like, OK, 
at lunchtime, we'll have our students program in chew food, avoid liquids, breath, probiotics, enzymes. Mm. That's what we have them plug in at lunch. And then every day, bzz, bzz, they get buzzed, they look down, they see that. Chew food, avoid liquids, breath, probiotics, enzymes. And after three, four months, they can't forget it. It's programmed in. That's why they call it television programming. They program us. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. We all know what that is if we're at a certain age. They want to date ourselves too much. But <laughs> do they even do those commercials anymore? I don't even watch TV. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't yeah. have a TV. I don't know. Yeah. The electronic income reducer is what they should have called it. <laughs> yeah. The old Alka-Seltzer commercials, obviously, is what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And why? Why do I know that? Because I've been programmed. You've been programmed. So why don't we just program ourselves with what we want, right? Mm-hmm. For it's sure. Really yeah. Really so, good. um, well, uh, Randa, you've been a phenomenal guest, just like I knew that you would be. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited about how we're going to be able to, you know, potentially, you know, do some things, you know, together with the, the solutions that we've got and some of the marketing things that we do and everything. But um, is there any other questions that you do have for Tim? As I know that uh, I, I promised the enrichers, we try to keep it right around an hour. You know, we don't want to bore them too much, but I think that it's uh, it's definitely been very enlightening and your backstory, just like I expected uh, and, and where you're at today has been uh, enlightening for me. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on. No questions for Tim. Tim, you just said so many few nuggets. I'm like, oh, my God, so many things I need to do. So, yeah, this was well worth the admission. Just those nuggets of information. Yeah. Well, I've got we've got some I've got some more good ones for you. you have to check out my podcast. I would check out episodes 56 and 61 to start with and then okay. have fun with the rest of them. Yeah. Call, well, call me if you have any questions. Card will hook you up. Yeah, Tim, why don't you go ahead and give yourself uh, give Health Hero podcast a plug if you don't mind. If you don't, I think you just did. It's the Health Hero Show um, is my podcast, and um, that's actually how I met Carter um, through podcasting connection, interview connections, is a podcast booking agency, and then we were like, "Hey, let's start a podcast." Okay, Health and Wealth, woohoo! <laughs> here we are doing it. So it's been a lot of fun, and here we are. Here we are. Well, hey, Enrichers, thank you so much for joining us today for another. Phenomenal guest, Randa Hoffman uh, from uh, Newport Beach. If you guys are in the Newport Beach area, if you and Richards are looking for a, a phenomenal financial advisor, female or male, doesn't matter, a great financial advisor. Uh, they're hard to come by, especially one that has your back. Um, and we don't mean just because you're a fiduciary, you always have their back necessarily. You definitely have to be able to have a good fit. But if you're looking for a great financial advisor, make sure to look out for um uh, Randa Hoffman, and we will make sure in the description, we've got Randa's website and make it easily uh, connectable there and everything. So, Enrichers, thank you again for joining us for the Health and Wealth Podcast Show. Make sure to share, like, and subscribe uh, every chance you get, and we will see you next time on the Health and Wealth Podcast Show for Randa Hoffman and my co-host, Tim James. I'm Carter Wilcoxon, CEO and co-founder of of Epic Services Company and CSI Financial Group. Thank you all for joining us and have a great day. Hey, Enrichers. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Health and Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Carter Wilcoxon. And I'm your host, Tim James. And by God, we are committed to helping you guys have fat wallets, flat bellies. So tune in again for another episode and make sure to like, share, and drink a lot of water. Or beer. You have just listened to the Health and Wealth Podcast with Carter and Tim.